So you know those movies like Taken or The Equalizer where you get a slightly older gentleman then make him able to kill like a hundred people? Well, we have something like that. On the Job is directed by Eric Matty, co-written by Eric Matty and Michiko Yamamoto, and stars Joel Torre, Gerald Anderson, Piola Pascual, and Joey Marquez. So On the Job is actually based on a true story of prisoners who are taken out of prison and hired to be contract killers and then smuggled back into prison so no one catches them. And On the Job really is a story about four characters. First of all, you have Mario or Tatang, played by Joel Torre, who's an old contract killer working from prison who really just kind of wants a normal life once he gets out. Then you have Danielle, played by Gerald Anderson, who's like uh, Mario's, you know, partner of sorts, but he's kind of dumb and stupid and young. Then you've got Francis, played by Piola Pascual, who is uh, a lawyer slash, like, investigator of sorts who ends up with this case of these prison murders. Then you have Joey Marquez as Sergeant Acosta, who is a cop who uh, initially got this case but now works with Francis. Now, when On the Job came out last year, it was almost instantly, it almost instantly became a Filipino modern movie classic because it really did prove that a uh, modern mainstream cinema could still produce like really hard-hitting R-rated stuff, not just a bunch of romantic comedies. And the, the influence on the job has had on the industry since last year is undeniable because of all these crime thrillers that started coming up. And if you need more evidence of how influential it's gotten, uh, earlier this year during the French Film Festival, which was in June, uh, because the Philippine Independence Day is on June 12th and the the, the festival kind of ran over June 12. Like on that day, instead of showing French films, they showed three Filipino movies. They showed uh, Manila sa mga ng Liwanag, which is considered the best Filipino movie of all time. Then they showed Norte Hanggan ng Kasaysayan, which is also considered a Filipino movie classic. And then they showed On the Job. But here's where my opinion gets kind of unpopular because while I do think that On the Job is a really cool movie and I really do think it's a good movie. I just don't think it's the best movie ever. Like, you know, lots of people think it's the greatest thing ever, and I'm literally the only person I know who only liked it but didn't love it, so crucify me if you want. First of all, whenever you talk about an Eric Matty movie, there's, the chances are it's gonna look really, really good. And um, aside from some, you know, some visual effects that could have used a bit more uh, tailoring and some of the blood makeup not looking very realistic, overall, this movie really is you know, extremely immersive in its production design. Like, every single space that this movie occupies really feels so stylized, but at the same time feels very lived in. So, you know, this vision of the Philippines you're getting is, it's very new, it's very, it's very interesting to look at, but at the same time, it's kind of familiar. But what's great about, like, the cinematography in this movie also is that every shot is just bathed in light and neon and stuff and just looks so good. And it really makes the movie feel like a neo-noir film, really, because through the use of shadows and lighting and stuff and really just supports the idea that this story takes place in this really seedy underbelly where you really can't trust anybody. I also just feel the need to mention my favorite shot in the movie is the last shot you see of Joel Torre, which I will not spoil, but that one shot which for for some people might seem kind of strange and murky and whatever, I thought it was brilliant. This movie also does sound good. Now, aside from some, you know, dubbing that they do, which which is common for a lot of mainstream Filipino movies, like, you know, if, if the camera is kind of far away, you can tell that they're just dubbing over the video. But aside from that, the sound really is generally very crisp and high impact. And, you know, sound really is very important in, like, action thriller kind of movies because it helps the viewer stay aware of the situation. Because when you have, like, a scene where you're trying to keep things tense, like, some the chase scenes in this movie, you really do need that sound to, you know, kind of put you in the moment. And when you have, like, gunshots and stuff that sound really, really impactful, you can feel the pain also. The score in this movie also helps keep the tension palpable, uh, while the use of rock songs, or some rock songs they use in this movie, I really do think they kind of give some of the scenes uh, some much-needed energy. And it really makes things more accessible because this story is really, really dark. But, you know, putting, like, a, a rock song in there to make it feel... You know, a bit lighter. This movie also uses a traditional sounding song, uh, Mascara by the Juan de la Cruz band, as it bookends the movie. And you know, it's kind of an obvious metaphor, but you know, at least the lyrics in the movie really do kind of support like one of the main themes of the movie. Now, the plot of this movie is actually very straightforward. It's not really about these cops trying to solve this mystery, or you know, it the 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 prisoners in the movie really their their motivation is really just because they're hired as contract killers but while the plot is very straightforward it, it really builds such an interesting world you know this this movie feels like it could be the start of like a really good tv show or at least the introduction 
to some criminal underworld, and I think the world building is fantastic. But what really gives the world its personality and its richness are these characters. These characters are, are, are feel almost instantly iconic to me, at least. Um, everyone is connected to the same corrupt system, so they really it really feels like they're in the same world, kind of like Sin City. But despite this, everyone still feels like an individual, you know, and the way they relate to each other is still very, very realistic. And if there's one department that this movie really excels, it's the acting. The acting in this movie is fantastic. So let's talk about the four leads from, from the bottom up. First of all, Joey Marquez. Um, he really really never becomes a caricature in this movie because his, his character is very kind of over the top, he swears a lot, but he doesn't become a caricature because he manages to keep uh, the character of Acosta very endearing, you know, like, he's, he's kind of the comic relief-ish character, like, he's the closest one you get, and, you know, he does some things that for other characters and other actors might seem kind of too ridiculous, like, giving people the middle finger, but the way he does it in this movie, I think, it just makes him, you know, kind of likable. Viola Pascual in this movie has the least unique character to play with, but he, he does play him well enough because, you know, Francis really does have to kind of, you know, go through some moral issues because he he discovers, like, different twists that happen in the movie, and he, he does fill in that role of stereotypical stoic policeman well. Gerald Anderson in this movie, though, really surprised me. He was able to combine, like, this oafishness, this dumb guy, uh, jock sensibility, with, you know, being, like, really oblivious and confident at the same time. So it was he was a really, really interesting character because he was kind of like Todd from Breaking Bad, but, you know, a bit more lively and stuff. But of course, if anyone steals the show, Joel Torres steals the show. I mean, he can be cold and really badass at one second, but you can tell that deep down he really is just struggling inside and he he knows what he has to do, but he hates having to do it. So, you know, whenever he does something bad, while he may look kind of cold on the outside, you know, later on you see that is just tearing him apart and he is fantastic in this role. I could really see him playing this the same role like in other movies, I wish. And as a director, Eric Matty really is able to inject life into every single shot of this movie because so nothing really feels staged in this movie. It all feels like it's taking place in a real environment. And you know, every scene is just so busy with activity. Um, there's no really corner of the screen that's blank and like nothing's happening. And he just has such an attention to detail, really, that no other director in the Philippines really has. The assassinations and the chase scenes in this movie are staged so well. They're extremely tense. They actually manage to use, like, crowded locations very well. And in, it's the closest we've ever gotten to Hollywood-style thrillers and stuff. Eric Matty really knows how to build a world and connect characters without really, you know, uh, resorting to ex exposition because a lot of this movie also is kind of wordless and it's it's great how you know it's just visual storytelling really but like I mentioned I do have a few problems with on the job for one I feel like some of the editing can be a bit jarring like sometimes we suddenly jump to another scene with another character and it's just really like you know it doesn't feel like the scene before it ended properly so it's just kind of jarring yeah and there are some slow sections throughout the movie, like the random, awkward, unnecessary sex scene that happens in the middle, but, you know, there are a few more moments in the movie, especially after, like, a big action scene that just really feel a bit too, you know, down and slow. But my biggest problem in this movie really has to do with the characters of Piola Pascual and Joey Marquez. I just didn't feel like they ended very satisfyingly, you know? Like, while I think they're interesting characters, their story arcs just kind of... They just kind of end, so it... You know, it didn't feel like they really learned anything or, you know, developed their character that much throughout the movie, so that was just kind of strange. Also, Joey Marquez's character's backstory feels extremely forced. Like, we didn't need to know his backstory, it was just fine having him being him. But other than that, again, I don't hate this movie. On the Job is a good movie, I just don't think it's, like, the best thing ever. And But I really actually like it more for the doors it opens and the possibilities it presents rather than the actual film itself. But, you know, this movie could lead to so many other places. I mean, it, it already has opened the door for other Filipino crime thrillers. And you can I can totally see a sequel to this movie with Joel Torres character again. You could maybe build sort of like a universe maybe for that ambitious, but we'll see. Anyway, so that's my review for On The Job. Have you guys seen it? What do you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, whether you agree with me or not, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation.